Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash agentacademy. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle or MP3 player. And now, welcome to the Agent Academy. Downloading latest Intel package. Welcome back. I was getting worried about you. Agent Academy episode 94 recorded on April 7th, 2022. I'm Agent Goonie Guy. Agent Dewey J. Agent Vane. And uh, we're going to be talking today about a lot of stuff. Uh, news. It seems like there's tons of news coming out these days. And um, we're going to um, talk about what we can and uh, silently uh, not talk about things that we can't talk about. Um, and that's really just vain. The other <laughs> two of us will sit there and try to coax information out of him. <laughs> and he won't do it anyway. So... Yeah. Um, Without further ado, we'll just talk about uh, what's been going on this week in our personal ingress journeys. Link established. And uh, for me, I got my uh, initial CSANS badge. Is that over? Can I still get the next level? When does that end? It's over. It's over. Damn. <laughs> so been close. Over for a couple hours. <laughs> oh, well. Good stuff, anyway. Uh, what about you, Vane? We missed you last week. Yeah, where and were I you? Was not throwing links. I went back and listened <laughs> to last week's episode the whole way through. Just to, they're like, he, "Oh, I bet he's out throwing links right now." No, it. He it, was uh, out it was raining pretty, shards, uh, is what he was doing. He was putting shards out. <laughs> he sharded. I wish the uh, sharded. the shards were, you know, just as much of a surprise there to me as they were anyone else. But uh, you know, sh- shards. shards. Yes, word. Bad word. Uh, I got level 16 for the, the third time. So third recursion. Nice. <laughs> I get Round of third recursion is in the books, and I immediately missed my 170 million flat AP screenshot. So as I was getting close to that milestone, like I was trying to hit um, 16 right on the 40 million mark, which would have put me at 170 million exact. And get a nice, you know, screenshot of that. I forgot that portal capture AP had changed. <laughs> so as I was getting close, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll capture this portal through a link, through a field. Then I should be able to, you know, assess where I'm at for the last couple of actions. And immediately was like, uh, uh, that's the level up animation. Why is that happening? Missed it. Uh, <laughs> managed to get a, a screenshot of just my profile at that point after trying to round out a little bit <laughs> to make it look cleaner. But uh, yeah, so I guess uh, recurse, when when do I recurse now? Do I do I go for 180 and recurse? Do I recurse at 200 million? Do I just stay 16 with all these events going on? I've been contemplating that a lot uh, recently. And then for the Comic Sans event, I did finish out the event at gold with 538 links. Yay! Uh, did nice. two small AP engines. Uh, didn't want to use any ADA, so tried to tried to just microfield where possible, make the tiny AP engines, because, uh, you know, those ADA are pretty valuable right now mm. with all the Cathera events up and coming. And, uh, yeah, still maintaining Epoch. Uh, nine more weeks to go, and we're going to be at Onyx for anybody that was in it since the beginning and hasn't missed any streaks. That's pretty much it for me. Nice. Agent Dewey J, how about you? Well, I'd be 10 more weeks for Epoch because I missed a week, <clears throat> but I'm close there. Uh, I did get a level. I hit L12 thanks to some microfielding for Comic Sans Link Challenge last weekend and first Saturday. Uh, not as many links as he had. I, I threw out 160. So, but I figured I wanted that bluish badge instead of the red one. So I stopped there. Let's just go with that. And say it's what we did. Um, but the, being able to throw under fields made that a lot easier because I was under a field. It's my own field, but I was under a field, 
and then uh, just other stuff in life, getting ready for a concert on Sunday, and got lucky, scored some Bill Engvall seats. So front row tomorrow night, right behind the guys in the wheelchairs. It'll be great. That's the comedian. Uh, yeah, that's the comedian. He's he's down around your way. So is that uh, um, here's your sign? Is that yeah, the... yeah? Okay. That's the guy. So funny, funny dude. Yep. So. Well, cool. Yep. That sounds like uh, a packed week. Are you, are you going to be able to get some ingress in? Oh, of course. You know, it'll be on the road. Be, you know, I pulled over on my way home Tuesday night to throw some stuff from a rest area and got a hot chocolate and went on down the road. So Nice. A little hot chocolate. Yeah. Well, sweet. Well, I guess uh, we can go ahead and get into the old the situation report. We've got um, Kathira ornaments appearing mm -hmm. on the map. Anything uh, noticeable, interesting about that that you found? One that I thought was really weird. I mean, most of the places, Washington, Philadelphia, Boston, Minneapolis, Austin, you know, those kind of make sense. And then there's Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, maybe they're trying to get close to you. I don't know. But, yeah, Gatlinburg's got eight ornaments sitting there. Uh, so maybe it has something to do with Ripley's, believe it or not, or the Space Needle. Uh, who knows? Dolly. Dolly's, Dolly, uh, is Dolly, yeah, Dolly's there, request. too. So, uh, close by, yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's going to be, what, 100 cities. And so uh, if you look at the map, and, and you'll see mostly in the United States there, East Coast, West Coast. I will say that New Mexico... Got in this time. Uh, Las Vegas has 14 uh, ornaments sitting there. So uh, they're represented this time. Um, but nobody close to where I'm at, I think, might be kind of close to Vane in a couple of them. I think Gallenberg's the, the central between all three of us, right? That's a, We should all just go there. Yeah, we should probably show up there. It's kind of a tourist trap. I mean, it's... <laughs> Huge tourist trap, but probably tons of portals because there is like it's zoos and rides and just everything you can think of. Gallenberg. Thanks, Retox. We got a subscriber. Thanks, guy. Um, yeah, and there's there's a number of them that are uh, some of them up in Canada and some of them down in in Mexico. And uh, there's one weird one that I'm looking at the map. I'm like, there's one in the middle of the water. So French Polynesia uh, near the Cook Islands has 30 portals <laughs> ornamented. So I think maybe that's the place we need to go and uh, and play. Because it sounds like it'd be a really nice place. Just It's We're just south of Bora Bora. Spence that out on the Agent Academy credit card, right, Goody? Yeah. 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 Like <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can probably get some peanuts for the ride. Yeah, I don't care. As long as I mean, we get it, I don't care about getting back. Right. It's a one-way trip's fine <laughs> with me. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I've got some locations along the coast of Peru and Europe and Japan well represented. None in China, South Africa, India, Ukraine, or Russia. So not a big surprise on the Russian thing there. Uh, but I did notice there's some links and fields showing up in Russia again. So they must have their, their stuff going uh, in Russia again. Um, yeah. So I, I could see them not wanting to do anything to... Um, get people out and about in in different areas, right? Like they got a, enough to deal with at the moment. Yeah, so. I, you know, we talk about it being hard to get out and, and get our daily hack in. You know, some guy in Ukraine. That's a whole different story. You know, dodging mortars to get your hack in and then getting back into the house. That uh, not hopefully something I'll ever have to deal with. So, so all those cities are uh, I lit up and I'm. Think they're going to stay lit up, or is there? And I'm looking to our our guy that uh, doesn't say much, but is it pretty much what we see on the map is what's going to be? Unless there are any, you know, corrections, I mean, Niantic is not forthcoming with that information. So <laughs> <laughs> your guess is as good as mine in terms of whether or not things change as we get closer to the event. Uh, corrections, you know, as the community makes note of certain things like paywalled portals that they get consensus on X fact wise for, we don't want to have, you know, a fight over this airport terminal. Yeah. You might see those <laughs> go away, but I don't think there will be too many more additions. If I had to guess. 
Yeah, I, no, I, I kind of looked over where they're at, and I don't think – I think I saw one that might have been – eh, it, it could have been in an area that was not – open, so to say, but it, I didn't think it was bad. So I think that they did a pretty good job of checking that, you know, it's not in the middle of you know, Walt Disney World or something like that this time. And uh, so with 100 cities, uh, they can kind of pick and choose. And uh, that plays into phase one and scoring. So we went over that last time, but I kind of butchered it. So might what? have been kind of confusing. Yeah, imagine that, me being confusing. <laughs> well, that so, was no help. So, yeah, well, you know, you were okay. Uh, so there will be agent-deployed beacons, and there'll be NIA Section 14 beacons. The agent-deployed beacons, uh, those will run April 15th from 1100 UTC to April 18th, 1059 UTC. And uh, it'll pretty much run like the last one did, except for the final score. So the global score will be a proportion of 260 anomaly points. So let's say that Res gets 56% of all of the uh, Battle Beacon points. They'll get 50 per, 56% of that 260. So that'd be about 146 points. Then the Enlightened would get the 114 that's left. So that works out to about 17% of the total score for Phase 1 which means those 100 cities uh, where NIA is going to light up their beacons, uh, that's going to make up the rest of that, that 83%. So the big, the big money's there. Um, I think the big thing, though, is they're doing it on April 18th, which is Easter. That could be a problem for some people. Um, but it starts 1430 local and ends 1730 local. And they said if Easter's a problem, you've got two more phases that you can get in and play with. Uh, so each location has anywhere from like 80 to 30. Most of them had about 15 or 20 and each city will be worth 13 anomaly points. Now I assume that really means each site because there's a few cities that have like two sites like San Francisco. They have one site and then there's another site that's like in the financial district. So I'm assuming that San Francisco is like doubled up because of that. Um, but there's 13 points there and then the city will be broken down according to the percentage. So again, if Enlightened gets 75% of the battle beacon points at a certain location, they'll get 10 points. I'm assuming they're going to round 9.75 up and then, uh, the a, a resistance will get the other three. Um, so the, that portion is 1300 anomaly points. 13 cities times 100. So so the whole thing together, if my math is right, is 1,560 anomaly points. But uh, it's those battle beacon points and the category, battle category, that's going to get you your percentage and get you those big points. That makes sense? Hmm. Or if you, you use the fractions, I wonder if it comes out to 1441. But anyway, Ooh. 1560. I, I just threw numbers at it. I, yeah, as soon as you get... started talking numbers, uh, my brain glazed over itself. <laughs> Man. So pretty much the same thing. You know, get as much as you can, uh, th get the battle in. But I think it, that what they're doing here is it, if you're losing, it's not going to work against you as much as in the previous scoring system because you, you're just – it's a percentage. So – you're not going to loot, get a whole bunch of points that's going to carry over to those other sites. There's only, you know, 13 points in that city. So it's not like it's going to be something that, uh, you know, Tokyo is going to make such a big dent in the score that it doesn't matter what you do in five or six other cities. Right. I mean, it almost seems like, well, yeah. And I, like the, the battle beacons, like the personal ones, like mm -hmm. those almost don't even feel like, worth doing except for just to get badge yeah ultimately I mean, it's yeah it's just about you know 17 percent, like i said so it's not really going to swing the score that much but being like you said for the badge and, and also covid you know we don't wanting people to move so much uh it does let you participate it doesn't let yeah. you yeah and, and who knows maybe next you know phase two they'll flip it and uh, more percentage for uh 
the agent deployed beacons. It's they haven't we haven't heard that yet, so we don't know. Yeah, how crazy would that be if it they flipped it or it's eighty three percent for the probably oh, that would be nuts. So, yeah, I, I could see a, a wide body of complaints <laughs> on uh, <laughs> on that metric being flipped. Yeah, I, I, think I mean people would boys... go straight towards pay to play kind of thing, right? Yeah, if they did something yeah, like that. Absolutely, and I, I think you know each or at least two of the, out of the three phases we had opportunities for you know free free beacons that Niantic had given out yeah. during Curie's effect. So I think you know, as long as they throw a bone every now and again, and you've got the opportunity to kind of, you know, meet up with some of your locals if you don't have a nearby city that you can attend, and, you know, everybody fighting off of those beacons or interacting in some shape or form, it still counts for, for badge credit. So it's not necessarily something where you have to go out solo and just basically pay to, to play, if you've got some freebies left over, you could still meet up with a group of folks and, and go that route. Uh, I'd like to see that continue in some capacity. I think it's interesting. It kind of shakes the dynamic up a little bit as well if you can't get out to a site. I think, you know, more more the merrier in that regard. Hmm. Yeah, and like I said, it's it does kind of push you more to play with others. Otherwise, you have to pull off the road at the last minute and you know throw all the battle beacons you have on something, right, Goonie? Yeah, <laughs> not all, but yeah, <laughs> lot, lots. I mean, I, I yeah, I have some screenshots. I should have added those to a feed somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, may, maybe one time they'll do something where we're like first week of the anomaly series, uh, special battle beacons drop. And then you can place them, and they stay up for the entire anomaly series, flipping. It's possible every hour, every day, some kind of whatever, but worth a bunch of points. Yeah. And you can put it wherever you want, or just pop up that but drop it rate stays you know, up and alerts everybody. Yeah, get the so everybody knows exactly where it is. It's on the map. <laughs> it's almost like they have a mechanic in the game with scans that. Would, would do just this uh mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm interested to see if we if we get a septa cycle in time that matches up with one of the uh, later phases i know we've already started like everybody's already started looking at the dates it's it's no surprise there but you know until niantic officially announces if it's going to be like a saturday or a sunday for for phase two phase three it's kind of still up in the air but i think that could make it a little bit more interesting where you don't really have to purchase the beacons in, in that regard. You just have to figure out where in your respective area you want to scan a bunch of portals to get beacons active during that window. And that could get uh, pretty wild pretty fast. Yeah, because when they all go off at the same time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you'd really have to you know, determine, could you go somewhere and try to influence them? If you know a bunch are scheduled in a certain area, yeah. or do you try to just you know hide them in out of the way places that nobody can get to and just recharge those portals? Yeah, and if they're if they're your faction color when that starts, you're going to get the points. I mean, it'll be a cat one, but you're still going to get the points. So, yeah, yeah, and you know, there's all sorts of cool things they can do now, like adding in some way to get points for having drones on portals in an area of play kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, and keeping those actives. Uh, anyway, good stuff. That's uh Kathira phase one. And um, then there's an earth day special event mm -hmm. multiples. Doing something that we, we kind of talked about this before was uh degradable K crap, K, K crap, K cap programs, uh, sort of downgrading things. Cause we had talked about, you know, there's times when you're trying to deploy a bunch of, uh, portals and you're like, I'm out of fives or I'm out of fours. And, uh, so but yeah, but I don't think you could walk fast enough to make this pay off. Um, but so one of the special events is the, XM degradable K cap program, April 21st through the 25th. Um, so the distance will be reduced down to four, four clicks. And again, that's 
it's not going to go to four clicks if you're you know in the middle of a program. So you want to make sure that you you finish off an eight click uh, cap K cap before the 21st, and then when you start, it's going to go into the four kilometers. And uh, stuff is kind of backwards. Uh, so you can one of the recipes you can put five L eights in at Rezos and get 40 L ones. So and I think you could probably hack and get the 40 L ones, but uh, five L eight bursters and you can crank that down to 40 L six ultra strikes and five L eight ultra strikes to five L six bursters. Kind of a strange thing. And then, then this one, I don't, I really don't get this next one. An Aegis shield and you can run it through your K cap and get eight common shields. Why? Why would you yeah, do that? The, to me, the two programs here that I think are going to get the most mileage are, <laughs> ironically, the one ages to eight common shields. Because a lot of people going for engineer points will probably be more than happy to just, you know, burn an Aegis. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think I could ever bring myself to do that. I don't think I could either. <laughs> save them right? up for events. Save them up for events. They're just too valuable for that kind of thing. Like you can, I, I'm pretty sure you could hack the eight common shields oh, yeah. at the rate that you would be hacking the Aegis shields. Yeah, um, and, and at the time you could walk four clicks, you could probably come up with eight common shields. Easily, easily. easily. Um, uh, I think to me, like the program that I might test with this is the five X8s to the 40 US-6. So X8, XMP8 to the US-6, the Ultra Strike 6. Uh, I think you know forty for that. That's that's pretty good. So if you've got a yeah. really shield dense area that you like to walk in, I could see you know taking a couple of eight bursters, running that program once or twice just to to supplement a little bit of boom. But uh, it's such a obscure like environment that you'd have to be in to really make that work. I I just I don't know. I think uh, during the time when the Optima recipes are going to be available, I'm just going to be more focused on converting flip cards. <laughs> yeah. I need more ADA. <laughs> and the other, there's other, two other ones. Uh, one very rare multi-hack, uh, you turn that to eight common multi-hacks, and one very rare heat sink, eight common heat sinks. So basically one to eight and changing it down to common. So, so that's what mm. you can get for walking four kilometers and throw in another one. You move five kilometers in any any Niantic game, so I don't know if that's additive with Pokemon and this. Uh, maybe it is. So uh, do, y'all, do y'all think th- they're testing that too to see if there's room for another type of kinetic capsule that has this as an option? A downgrade capsule and an upgrade capsule? Yeah. Could be. Or I, I guess it could all be in the same thing, just different programs. Same capsule. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if you could, you know, say, hey, you throw in eights and dial what you want. You know, if you want fives, you want sixes, dial it in, and it it just changes the number that you get. So, you know, you throw in your eights and you get a bunch of L2s out of it because I'm short on L2s. But again, you got to walk the four clicks or eight clicks whenever you're, it goes back to um, the full distance. But uh, so, if yeah, if you move five kilometers to any Niantic game during that time, uh, 21st to the 25th, they'll plant a tree in your honor. So, Will they put like a sign on it? Let everybody know it's for me. <laughs> I, I think I, I think that's kind of weighted to you guys' side because all those trees are going to be green. There's going to be no blue trees. <laughs> so I think they should like, you know, give us a pond or something. So that's, that's blue. <laughs> they'll dig a pond? <laughs> they'll dig a pond for everyone. So is that for every five kilometers or is that five kilometers and you get a tree i or can i walk in and get two on that one <laughs> yeah that's very important i assume it's i assume it's probably one one tree um i would imagine i don't i don't know i feel like they're going to count out the total that's what i'm thinking and just and then okay yeah and then whatever you know they're, they're there's got to be a service out there right now that's just like, look, you just pay us X amount and we plant a tree, you know, for whatever. Um, because there's, I don't know, there's a lot of we'll plant a tree things, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, you know, and I, I don't feel like Niantic's actually going to go down to, you know, like Home Depot and 
like buy a tree for each of us and <laughs> think, go play it. No, it's, but that's okay. Heart's in the right place, and it's, yeah, it's awesome. They'll, sit, they'll send you a little trees. coupon, and you can go get it. And it's yeah. green. It's like green. Uh, I kind of think what they did Blue last key. year was, you know, I liked the direction they were going last year, where it was like, if, if you're out and about in these places, you know, real world game, you're out there, it's time to move, agent. Like, you know, pick up some trash on a, a trail that you frequent, or, or just, you know, like beautify an area versus... Like okay, just just go out and walk, walk a bunch around, with your, play your, the your game. Phone. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, more of like, hey, go out there and help clean up the place. Not, you know, I guess technically we're doing that right because they're just gonna plant the tree for us instead of us planting it. Yeah, but can we know. plant a tree and make them walk for five kilometers? <laughs> <laughs> You can if, pick the niantic employee that has to walk it. <laughs> I think if you plant enough trees, you, you can then get the, the van, the NL 1331 van to come to your place. It, it, you have to get the mileage from where it's at. Uh, you just trade that in and get it to your house. That'll work. Yeah. Uh, the fuel economy on the van. <laughs> so Earth Day 2022, 20, metal will be in the store for 2,500 CMU and, uh, Speaking of uh, other things, of uh, full events. So we're getting closer to full events. Um, In-person event in Jacksonville, Florida, during the 23rd and the 24th. So the 23rd, NL1331X will be there. So you, you have a van day that you can get that, that badge if you don't. And April 24th, looks like it's going to be just a plain old mission day. Is that right? Nothing special, no... Play from home, just a mission day. Yes. Yeah, just at the uh, Sandlot Jacks. Uh, so, you know, the, the fact that uh, John Hankey is out there will be speaking at the Sandlot Jacks by uh, Goruck and a few of the other larger, you know, fitness names in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of interested to see, like, you know, the recording for, for that uh, that talk. I won't be able to be there in person, unfortunately. Uh, work obligations for that particular you know tail end of the month but uh hoping to see other events you know in the near future here because I'm, I'm one mission day away from onyx so it's like come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah and retox in, in the chat was asking do you think we'll be any old style anomalies later without the battle beacons and that kind of stuff i i would think so i think that we're you know the pandemic's kind of winding down for most people you know, it, it, they just can't really tell what that's going to do. But it, I would say, at least with this, I mean, if you got a, a van day and a mission day, uh, they're starting to move towards that idea that, you know, we can all get together again. And, and I think, though, also there's the let them know that's what you want, because I can also see them kind of going to this like, well, hey, this is working out really well, and we don't really make money off doing in in-person anomaly event mm -hmm. um so maybe we don't need to do that anymore so it's like if you want them to do that you need to let them know that hey you really want that and yeah um you know you're willing to pay more for a ticket or buy more swag or, or whatever to make it more enticing for them to hold events like that yeah making money off of an anomaly i mean you've got the swag sales I mean, you, you, I don't know that you'd make a whole bunch off of that. And then, uh, I don't know, did they have? I mean, they could be making money off. I don't, I don't know, you know, it, it all depends on, it's just economics. I don't know how much, you know, they sell tickets and mm -hmm. is it, um, how much money are they spending? How many people are they sending? You know, all that yeah. stuff. So, and I guess I would think that, you know, after, you know, what, two years, uh, people would be willing to pay to go to an anomaly. I would think a number of them, more so than they might have before. Uh, so. But, so, so what's up with shards? Is on some <laughs> unannounced event happened? Or is this an April Fool's like it's joke? Part of, part of that, uh, you know, Comic Sans uh, shenaniganry. We had the, the shooting stars, shards. Shooting, shooting shards? Shards? Some people would, you know, yeah, prefer to probably shoot at the shards, but <laughs> we, 
we, we don't do that unless it's Texas. So they started to, it looked like it started to April 3rd, the night there, uh, April 4th. And of course there were all kinds of postings and they were April fool warnings. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is real or not, but so yeah, I looked on the map and I finally found a portal and it did have a shooting star shard on it. So they were out there. Um, and it seemed like most of them or all the locations, at least that I looked at, there were seven shards in the location and two target portals. So one for each faction. And, uh, it's, they were unsure exactly how they were going to behave when they first started, um, but they seemed to jump about every five minutes if they were linked to an L4 portal or better. And uh, if they weren't linked to anything, at the top of the hour, they would just randomly jump. Um, it's similar to what we probably have seen in the past. Um, and once it scored, once you got that shard into the target, uh, it quit moving. So... Don't really know what the payoff was, other than I would say it's probably a good in-field test for uh, Niantic because it's been quite a while since you've had shards and you've probably been a lot of changes in uh, the scanner. Uh, but if you want to score it, which I don't want to score it because Enlighten would have won uh, 36 to 30 if you're looking at the total number of shards that hit a target. So the Enlighten took six cities, uh, the Resistance took four cities. And there were about four shards that never really captured or scored. Uh, so Singapore had three of theirs that didn't move, and, and there was one in Berlin that, that didn't move. So the shards were out there. Uh, agents were on them pretty quick. And uh, they were pretty spread out. In the United States, we had them in New York and Mountain View, California. So uh, Tokyo, Osaka, Taipei, Singapore... Stretch, someplace in the Netherlands, Berlin, Stockholm, and Lima, uh, all had shards. So I didn't, I didn't hear of anybody, you know, camping out overnight to move the shard in the middle of the night or any of that kind of madness. But I'm sure that there was a little bit of madness with it. There's always madness with shards. I, I think <laughs> the interesting thing here with these, uh, once they spawned and actually started getting scored, was the fact that they actually were sticking to the target portals. So for anybody that remembers the last few rounds of shards during anomalies, we had more of this uh, research node uh, type shard event where the shards would just keep constantly moving. And to score points, you had to get them on a you know, research node, but ultimately you, you could pull them off, you know, put them on a, another research node, get more points. Uh, you know, Factions could fight over where a cluster of shards were going. And in this instance, I believe that this was a test to see if they could get target portals to work in some sort of an automated function instead of having to manually turn off the ability for the shard to jump. So they automated the whole thing that once it hits the, the target, it stays. Yeah. Instead of them having Let, to go less in and overhead say, for stay. Niantic, which means that, that you know, I'm kind of hoping, you know, global shards, please, <laughs> at some point, <laughs> lots yeah. of them. Yeah, if, if you're a new player, when they talk global shards, I mean, we're talking shards that start, you know, in Europe and land in Texas. And it doesn't sound like you can do that, but it, it does happen. It'll, they'll make it jump the pond. And uh, it's amazing to watch that happen. So, rumor has it, it might be a, a mini event test for something in Q3. Rumor? Yes, yes, yes. No, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would like mm -hmm. to see it. I, I mean, I, I think it's pretty. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious hint. Um, so I would like to see it. Who knows if we'll see it as part of like a you know, Thera, something that comes afterward. Personally, I would like to see a mix. Um, either you know, battle begins plus shards or. Uh, maybe, you know, a target portal that kind of works like a research node, but uh, for capturing points for shards, there, there's, like there's so much that you could do with mm -hmm. those two things combined. Um, or, you know, I'd like to just see a traditional global shard game. It's been 
you know, almost five years since we had global <laughs> shards. Like, yeah. I, I realize the the trauma and the PTSD a lot of people have regarding those, but I think there there are a lot of positive uh, yeah. memories in battling over shards, and it was pretty clear during the you know X fac global shards that we got that you know people were more looking forward to the competitive aspect than just having to work together to to score them for you know yeah. opposing nemesis. So back in those the globals, I mean, how many shard uh, targets did we have? We had like we only had like what five or six per faction. Well, during the 2017 global shards, there were a handful of targets uh, per faction that would spawn in the. Mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of chunked up into like two week time frames for a series of target portals being available. And then, if I'm remembering correctly, about a week into the two week. Uh, phase, the target portals would switch alignment. So, mm. you know, like New York City, for instance, that had a, a target portal at first, that, that target portal, you know, belonged to the, the res, and then, you know, a week into the event, flip to the Enlightened. I might have the order wrong there, but you get yeah. the, the concept. So if, if they automate this, they can do more like what they're kind of doing with the uh, battle beacons that they should, they could, I'm not saying they are, but they could do kind of like uh, what they're doing by putting out a bunch of uh, NIA Section 14 beacons. They just do NIA Section 14 shards. And so maybe you have 100 locations in the United, you know, in the world that have shards and targets. Um, and I think that would probably make it a little easier on those people that are like, you know, I have, there's shards. I have to travel six hours to get there. And I have to, you know, sleep in a tent so it, I can help it move in the middle of the night. Uh, but if it's, you know, a couple hours uh, in a park that's, you know, 45 minutes away, uh, it might might be a different deal. And people, like you said, people will be more willing to to battle it out. The solution is always more shards. More shards. Just more, more shards. <laughs> All the complaints that people had about global shards, you could solve by just more shards. Yeah, yeah. I, I never really got to touch a shard. I, I, I had one pass over me. And I, I was ready to help, but it made the big jump. I mean, it's not like there's anything you know big going on this year for Engrass that would uh, need some big event like Global no, Shards, I, right? I, I mean, I so. something in November. Mm -hmm. That's uh, double yeah. digits. We'll see. I think it's the tenth anniversary of ah, no, it's not big enough for anything like this. That. It wouldn't we'll have see. tension. Yeah, you know, never mind. Uh, so we can put... <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, can't wait to be able to put 10... Um, <laughs> 10, reso or, 10 uh, resonators on a <laughs> 10 resonators portal. On That's going to be <laughs> fun. Why not go for 12? You know, just fill up all four <laughs> slots. Two years. Two years, and then we'll... Two years, okay. The 10, 11, 12. I, I get it. 10. I get it. Uh, okay, so uh, that's good. Starting rumors, multiples, and uh, so the Secura uh, collection medals, they'll be available until May 2nd. Uh, yep. Cherry Blossoms. Yep, those are still out there for you to buy. Uh, and we had some people that evidently had some problems with Intel uh, down for a number of agents, and uh, I think that might have been stock Intel got an update and it didn't come back as well as it should have. Uh, so those those agents were really confused because of what I saw. They said, "Well, I can I can run the scanner, but I can't see anything in Intel." And that's usually you don't think that you know if you're down on one, you're down on the other. But they they were able to log into the scanner, but they couldn't log into Intel, and that was really confusing for them. So, but I think it's all squared away now. Hopefully. And is that? Is the Intel update and all that shenanigans, is that part of the the uh, relocation of the portals? I, I don't know. I, I could see that causing some issues because your Intel has to reflect that you've moved those things, but you're only moving them you know, 20, 20 meters or so. So it's not like you're taking anything off the board. Uh, but yeah, they, they're continuing to relocate about 15,000 portals. Uh, so there might be portals changing. Again, keep in mind when they do that, if you have a link or a field, it may drop. 
when they if they adjust that portal. Uh, so New York and Tokyo probably should be seeing it now. Uh, London, San Francisco, and Seattle near the end of the month, and Los Angeles and other U.S. cities, smaller cities, in uh, early May. So, and as part of that, were some portals going away completely? Do we know? I don't think so. I, from okay. what I read, I, well, we'll have to ask this guy. Um, from from what I read, it, it just looked like they were just realigning the board, so to say. And I, just, if I had to guess, it was things that were bumped. Yeah, I feel like the focus there was on, you know, location edits for for inaccurate um, portals. Or, you know, poise in this case from a Wayfarer point of view. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think, you know, Niantic is, they're trying to turn a couple of these these cities into, I think, like grand spectacles for, for AR. Because, I mean, it, it's no secret. You go look at the, uh, the jobs uh, category for Niantic careers, and there are a couple of positions that are available that seem to be coordinating, you know, like mass scanning of certain cities. New York City is on that list as well. So I have a feeling some of these areas might be demo grounds for things that we don't quite know about yet. Wink, wink. Um, I know. That's like all just Triana. public opinion. Like, go, go, go find it. Do the research. Do the research. <laughs> they need you know. to make Triana one of these cities. We get that place scanned. Matter of fact, I think they could probably buy up Triana pretty quickly and just have an <laughs> ingress city. I mean, why not? Just go, Let's go ahead and, and do it. Can you get Triana in just like one scan? Just to get the whole city, just one scan. For fast, uh, that, enough, that way you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, they've they've got to be. I've seen a number of things that are real interesting that they're doing with uh, Lightship, and uh, so seeing more interactive stuff uh, with you know the camera and what you're seeing and you know things that are more along the lines of what you probably see with Pokemon it's, as opposed to Ingress. And I, I don't know if we'll go that route. That if you go that you know. When you're playing Ingress, instead of seeing a map, that you're seeing that camera view of the real world. Uh, I don't know how I'd feel about that. If I'd like that or not. With so, the VR goggles on. Yeah, yeah well, it's the VR changing. goggles. Yeah. <laughs> Drive your VR goggles on. Uh, uh, go. Go on. Go. Oh, you. you. Nope. Nope. You. 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 It's you. Bang. Hot potato, Ch- hot potato. Tell me about the changes. <laughs> ch- 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 changes, and then TOS violation. <laughs> well, 5.26 p.m. yesterday, they made it official. Uh, they're going to allow links under fields and less than 500 meters to be there all the time. So they, you know, they said it was something that they probably wanted to do to, to get those new uh, agents in, and I can kind of see that under some respects. If you know you got a, you're just learning how to play, and you live under a perma field, <coughs> my zone. Um, you know it, it's it's probably not as fun because you you don't get a chance to link. Uh, so you would get get a link there to do that um, and make fields. Uh, and, and I think that they had some discussion about the MU score for those. Um, now, tell me if I'm right here, Vane, that the MU will count towards the regional score, but will not count towards your personal MU if it's under a field. Is that correct? I, I know the Post had mentioned that they were looking at MU not counting, uh, since I think that was the you know original intention to... If you're throwing a field, even if it's a micro field, underneath a previously established field, that that shouldn't count. Although at the moment, it does. I'd need to look into a little bit more of the specifics because the yeah. wording on that post still 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 confuses me a little bit. Um, you know, I think the important part there is that there could be future tweaks. Um, I think if they do find a way to to kind of work around that, they might go back and revisit it. But it seems that limiting the link distance was the more you know straightforward narrow path that they could walk yeah rather than trying to figure out the the calculation for the mu not counting yeah because it, it shouldn't be i mean you'd have to do a crap load of microfielding to really make a big dent in either your personal mu or, or the regional score mu 
uh, so, you know, if you're throwing five, you know, 500. Yeah. So, and, and I guess the one change I'd like to see is I, like, I like this in general, but I would really like it to be that only the faction that has the field can throw under that field. Hmm. So it's a bonus for controlling that area. And it, I never thought about you know, that. you'll want to control an area now because now you can still throw under it. Um, yeah, so, so if you're but, blue and you're yeah. under a blue field, you can throw, but if you're green, you can't. That's right. an idea. Right. And then to me, it's like the scoring kind of takes care of itself then, right? Because, okay, well, yeah, you can score more because you're controlling it and we're going to make it more of an incentive for you to go take down those big fields. Yeah, it's true. But the other rules still apply. Uh, so you can't cross links and the range, of course. Uh, and they, like Vane said, you know, that's, you know, L1, you can get 160 meters. L2, you can get out to about 810 meters. So you're not really going to be putting up level eight. Well, I guess you could put level eights up, but you just wouldn't be linking too far with them. So other changes, uh, starting back on the 31st, uh, portal recharging as somebody found out, uh, returned to its original value of 10 AP down from 65. And, uh, they said to offset this, they're encourage more play at portals, implementing a new temporary change to portal capture. So, now capturing a portal will increase from 500 AP for the first resonator bonus to 675. So you get a little more for that first, that first capture. Uh, so there's that. And they're going to look at a couple other ones that they may change quarterly, which is deploying two L7s. I'm really used to that deploying two L7s. I wish they'd bring back the two L8s. But, uh, for right now, they're going to let us throw on two L7s, and the countdown between hacks is going to stay at 90 seconds. But uh, each quarter, that could go away. And you got other things that they're going to make permanent. You can submit 180 missions. Uh, and this one, I, I, I don't know why. I just didn't think about this one. DroneNet enables agents to hack a portal from anywhere and counts towards Sojourner. And I don't know why I didn't think about that. I've lost my Sojourner five or six times in the last couple months. I'm like, er, maybe I should just do a drone hack. Uh, L10 agents can review waste spots in Wayfair and L8 agents with an arc core supported device can submit portal scans. So the, uh, what is that? That's mesh. I think they call that meshing, which I'm unable to do because I don't have a supported phone. Do you have a supported phone? Bang? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Scanning is, uh, mm. you know, something, something I've, been, I've been working on a little bit. Uh, I just got Platinum Scout not too long ago. Uh, still trying to work on Platinum Controller though. That's gonna, mm -hmm. it's gonna, gonna take a little bit for that one. I think the numbers are uh, should be reversed on those, honestly. So is the mesh scanning different? Make it easier? Or? I've actually found mesh scanning to be a little bit harder. Um, it just seems to be more finicky with the way that you have to, you know, maneuver around the object, and then the object itself can sometimes make it more difficult to mm -hmm. do the mesh scanning. I think it's more the mesh scanning more focuses on space around the object, not so much the object itself. So I don't know. For for anything that I've done scanning wise, I, I just I just stick to the regular old method. Yeah. And I wonder if that mesh scanning is bringing in more information or more points of data uh, for Lightship and whatever else they're going to be doing down the road. So it does look like they're giving a little bit of a boost saying, hey, you know, if you're an L8 agent, uh, you can submit those portal scans and that gives them more people out there scanning for them. Uh, I do know that when I tried it on my phone before I figured out it wasn't supported, I, it looked like it worked great until it got to the end and then it just kind of went away. I was like, what the heck? So... Yeah, so AR core support. Uh, it'd be nice if you had it, but evidently it slows you down. Oh, Dang. well, cool. Dang. Let's changes. Some Dang. staying, some going, some might go later. So enjoy them while they're here. 
Uh, let Niantic know what you think about the changes. I know there's, you know, probably a lot of people for and against like the links being able to go up under fields mm-hmm. kind of changes. So, you know, go to the community forums and um, talk about it, discuss it. That's, that's the only way they, they know what's, what's going down. So. And it sounded like yeah. in the last uh, thing that they had, uh, they were talking about how they were doing things and it looks like, there's a big emphasis on listening to the player base and making changes according to, you know, what they hear. And uh, if all they're hearing is things you don't like, things you don't like might happen. Yeah. Speaking of things you might not like happening. <laughs> Ta-da! Agents. On Saturday, 23rd, April, 2022, Niantic Community Day will take place around the world across all of our Niantic games, and we invite you to attend in person to meet fellow agents and explore an event location near you. Don't forget to visit unique, temporary Niantic Community Day portals that will be activated for the event. Take advantage of the event's photo ops, and share your memories with us on social media using hashtags hashtag IngressEarthDay and hashtag MediaAlder. That was weird. It's weird. Just took over the stream. What's going on? <laughs> I don't even know if it worked. But, uh... Nemesis? Was that a Nemesis guy? Yeah, I think so. Oh, they all yeah. wear suits. You know, yeah. that? they wear suits. Personal things. And just putting, you know, words into people's mouths. But um, <laughs> we do have a, a code for this week. And I don't know if anybody actually watched the stream from the new agentacademypodcast.com slash live page. But if you are there, you can actually just scroll down. And there's a form there for you to submit the code, which is... AA shooting stars, AA. Uh, you can also leave a voice message on that same page. Ooh. Ooh. And we'll add some other things. Like, I think we're going to add the form down there for submitting stuff, um, like ideas. And eventually we'll have another show where we, we talk uh, about ideas. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, we'll talk about what people are talking about. Like, uh, it's a benefit for a newish person to joining the same faction as you. And strangely enough, if you live in a rural area, it is not a benefit. You want somebody from the other side because you don't have anybody to play against. And uh, so there you go, Adam. Join the other side. Join the resistance. Mm. Or, JBJ you- Blaze, I tried I tried to code. It does work. So you're good to go. Oh, I wonder why you don't have a field there. That's weird. Uh, probably using get, like Opera for as a browser. I'll double check. I, I was logged in when I did it, so there there may be an issue. You can always get it at the website. Darn it! I, I thought we were like this close. We we had it ready ahead of the show. I'm like, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can do it on the normal page. So there's the normal. <laughs> it still works there. Um, Last episode's code. Oh, I don't know if we can do that. Oh, yeah, we can do it. Last episode's code was AA Kathera AA. Yeah. So uh, go go get your code on, and um, you know we'll talk to you next week. Go and get out there and and move and stuff with a K (laughs) and a Y. I don't know if you're supposed to. (laughs) It's with the K Y, so. And the B and the raw. So um, we'll put it in chat. See y'all next week. Not going there. Bye. (laughs)